Let's revisit some of those nervous system states, some of our key threat responses, and really get to grips now in a really brief way on what it's gonna look like, feel like, and sound like when we're in those places. Because it is a really useful tool to be able to have that interoception, have that ability to turn inward and figure out how am I feeling, what's going on with me, be able to name, be able to acknowledge, that in and of itself is a massive step in a healing journey, being able to language and name and even just to feel what it is that's happening. And then of course it allows us and paves the way for the next steps because when we know what it is that's going on with us, we can match up a tool that's going to be useful. Let's go. So you might remember our polyvagal curve, which looks a little something like this and then it's divided into these three sections. Now, this is just to make it distinct in our minds, but of course, in our nervous systems, it's not as distinct as this. There's much more nuance. And up the side here, this is an indication of the level of arousal or stress. So down the bottom section of the polyvagal curve is a place called ventral vagal. And you'll remember this as the place of rest, digest, and restore. So this is our parasympathetic nervous system, a branch of our parasympathetic nervous system. So this is a place where we feel calm, connected, resilient, our digestion is working well, we're sleeping well, and it's also referred to as the social engagement system because in this place we want to connect with others and we feel safe to be able to do that. So as that level of stress increases, we come into the next section, which is our sympathetic nervous system. And you might recognize this as fight flight. So this is where we have detected some level of threat, whether that's a real threat or whether that's perceived doesn't matter to the nervous system. This stuff is taking place at a subconscious and automatic level. So if we perceive something to be threatening, and that could be an email from a boss, it could be worries that we have around our finances, it could be a presentation that we have coming up, it could be going to therapy, whatever it is, can be something that tips our kind of level of tolerance, it tips our stress load up into this place of sympathetic. And here in fight, we might begin to feel angry or aggressive or irritated. And over here in flight, this is where we'll feel anxiety. This is where we'll feel panic and worry. Flight might also look like that kind of go, go, go energy of feeling like we're not able to rest or to be still or to feel relaxed and calm and content in a present moment. Now, if our level of stress or arousal peaked too quickly, as in something felt extremely life-threatening to our system, again, that doesn't actually have to be a real life threat. It's something that we perceive to be. So if we have a nervous system that's lived in this zone of chronic activation and it's really used to threat, or we've had a past experience of high trauma, or just a lot of fear or things that have happened in our childhood, we might have a nervous system that lives above the baseline a lot of the time, and it also gears itself to going into this next place, which you probably heard me call dorsal vagal, which is actually a branch of the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is a place of shutdown or collapse. But there are different levels of dorsal vagal. So all the way at the top here, this would be our full shutdown. So this would be collapse or fainting. But here, closer to sympathetic or mixed with sympathetic energy, we might feel all the things we feel here. Anxious, worried, angry, irritated, but also feel stuck and unmotivated. So... This is a place of shutdown with fear.
So that will happen, as I say, if your fear level spikes too quickly, something feels extremely threatening to you, or this will happen if your nervous system is under a huge amount of load in the sympathetic nervous system for too long. So if you've been living in a place of a lot of anxiety and stress and worry and feeling really activated, eventually the nervous system is likely to tire to say, we cannot sustain this level of output any longer. I'm going to shut the system down in order to kind of reboot and recalibrate and to keep us safe. But what that actually feels like is often depression or feeling down in the dumps and slumped and feeling like we just can't get going. So I wanted to also look at this in relation to what you might notice in yourself in order to be able to determine what kind of nervous system state you're in. So ventral vagal or social engagement, we know you'll probably feel calm and connected. You'll feel safe and you'll notice that in your behaviours and your thoughts will probably sound something like, I can. You know, I can do this or I can bounce back from this or I'm going to give this a go. They're more strength based in terms of your thinking. As we come up into sympathetic nervous system, you'll notice other things begin to shift. So you might notice your behaviors shift into things like avoidance or hypervigilance. So that's that constant kind of scanning of your environment for danger or maybe hypersensitivity. You'll probably feel more reactive and your thoughts might move to something like, I, I have to, you know, I've got to do this, I have to, blah, blah, blah. Or they might sound like over here in the flight, what if? You know, our worries start to come out. What if this happens? What if this goes wrong? In fight, it might sound a little bit like should. You know, they should or I should have. And there becomes kind of that aggressive movement towards element, that anger that comes into our thinking patterns. So along with these kind of behavioral things that might come in, you'll probably also notice lots of body sensations in this place because as this arousal and stress increases, what that means is we're getting more cortisol and more adrenaline into the system. And so from this place, you then might begin to feel dizzy or lightheaded or nauseous, or you might feel a tightening in your chest, a change in your breathing, you might feel like your vision changes, you become hyper fixated on things. You might even feel like you get weird tingly feelings down your arms and legs. You might feel dropping in your stomach, IBS-like symptoms. All of that is actually really normal and it's the system getting you ready to fight or to flight, to fight the danger or to run away. And then as we come up here, our behavior is gonna change drastically. So this is going to look like no motivation. And this is going to look even like postural elements of slumping. The shoulders might round forward, the spine might collapse, whereas here you probably have more rigidity in the spine and more muscular tension. Here you might feel kind of heavy and like you just sort of can't get moving. It might mean you want to sleep more, you might feel like you just can't get up off the couch, those kinds of things. And your thoughts probably move into more this realm. I can't, or I don't know. I don't know how. So there's some things to look out for. I know this has now become a very busy drawing, but really it gives us this idea that we can check in with our own nervous system to understand where we're at. So if I'm feeling calm and connected and safe, I know that I'm here. I can look out for these things, avoidance, hypervigilance, hypersensitivity, reactivity. I can look out for the change in my thinking styles. I have to, I should, what if? I can look out for that kind of go, go, go overworking energy to let me know that I'm in a place 
of stress. And then I can look out if I'm here and I start feeling like I can't, I don't know, and I'm shut down and unmotivated, I can know that I'm here. And I can differentiate too, whether I'm in full shutdown, like I really, this would be fainting and collapse, whether I'm kind of in a really depressed, stuck place, or whether I'm actually feeling, you know, still stuck and unmotivated, but actually full of anxiety and irritation in that place of kind of mixed nervous system states. So this kind of differentiates them into three gaps, but remembering that this isn't as simple as this and that we can have mixed states. So we can even mix ventral vagal and dorsal vagal, and that actually gives us intimacy, shut down with a feeling of safety, for example. We can mix sympathetic with ventral vagal. So that's safety and activation gives us play and dance. So these two places aren't bad. We're designed to be able to move between them. And that would look a little something like this in a day-to-day -day sense. You can imagine that this is your window of tolerance, right? In the middle would be totally calm. Up here would be getting a little bit um, stressy and here would be getting a little bit shut down. So this is going to be our dorsal down the bottom. And this is going to be our sympathetic. And right in the middle here is our ventral vagal. And during the day, you're probably going to do something like this. At work, we might be up here feeling a little busy and then we'll come home and we'll chill. But all the while, we're inside our window of tolerance. So that's going to feel okay. Our body is meant to use this activation and deactivation. It's like using the accelerator on a car to get us going and get us moving when we need it. And then being able to use our foot brake to bring us back down to calm when we need it. Then this is someone who's going outside their window of tolerance. And it might look like I'm peeking up here in sympathetic and coming down here. This is someone who's slamming on the accelerator and then ripping up the handbrake to pull us back. So what we do within this membership and when we do nervous system work is we take the edges off, off these peak experiences by learning about our nervous system and by learning tools that we can use that increase our emotional resilience and our capacity that brings us back inside our window of tolerance where we're able to experience stress and anxiety and activation but do so at a level where we're able to bring ourselves back down. That is what a true resilient nervous system looks like. Not one that cruises along completely calm all day, but one that fluctuates within this level of tolerance and can bring itself back to the baseline when needed. So hopefully this has been a little bit helpful for you in understanding your own nervous system a little bit more and the motivation for working with it going forward.